Okay, today we're going to be looking at some stuff with central tendency and spread. So we're going to start off with a class of 24 students and how often they ate out for dinner last month. And so you can see that some students didn't eat out at all last month and a couple of students ate out a whole lot, some of them almost every day. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and do each of these six pieces and talk about the different statistics that go along with this data. Now the first thing it asks us to do is create a column or dot plot of the data. Now you may or may not have done this in class, so what we're going to do is go ahead and just build it. So I have several different values here from 0 to 30. And so I'm going to create a little chart here. I'm going to do the column first. Now I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I don't really want to go out to 30, so I'm just going to zip 30. All right, so that's going by ones. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'll mark the fives just so 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 20, and then that's 30 there. All right, so now I'm actually going to do the dot plot first. A dot plot just means that you put one dot for each data point. All right, so one data point for zero means that I'm going to put one dot down. For one, I've got two ones, so I'm going to put down, oops, I'm going to put down two dots. One, two dots. For two, I've got one dot. For three, I've got one dot. For four, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like there are a lot of people that maybe out, ate out once a week. One, two, three, four, five. And then I've got four fives there. So one, two, three, four. And then I've got two sixes, a seven and an eight. So you should have, you, you can figure out what I'm doing now. And then I've got two tens. So a couple of people that eat out maybe two or three times a week. And then a 12 and a 15 and a 20 and a 30. Okay. And so that's my dot plot. All right, that's not too difficult. Now, the column, I'm just going to color right over this because the column plot is the same thing except you're going to have values over here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. And so I'm just, instead of having dots, I'm going to have little columns. And so each column is going to represent what my dots just represented. And it's still the same. I still got one, two, three, Four, and everything looks exactly the way it is except all these columns are going to be here and it's going to be kind of crammed in and that's okay but that's going to show us the data now sometimes we'll kind of group things we'll say okay how many people were zero how many people were between two and five and we'll make columns that way but you can get the idea here Whoop, that was fast so now I've got all the other ones on there. So that's my column graph. Now it's a little bit difficult here on the computer, but you still get the idea. You can see the columns, which are bigger than the other columns. So let's go on. We've done the dot plot and column plot. Now it asks us to find the measures of central tendency. So if I want to find the measures of central tendency, that means mean, median, and mode. Now you can probably see from our column or dot plot that the mode is 4. That's the one that happens most often. The median we can get very quickly just by crossing things out. So 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, cross off another 4, cross off another 4, cross off a couple more, cross off a couple more, Oop, and it ends up being right here in the middle. So obviously my median will be 5, and now I need to do my mean, which means I need to take all those stinking numbers and add them together. So you can do that. I'll go ahead and do it and tell you the answer. Boop. So I ended up getting a mean of 7.125. And all I did was I added all those numbers together, and then I divided by 24, because that's how you get the mean. All right, so now let's go on to letter C. Letter C wants the five-number summary. Remember, the five-number summary is the minimum the first quartile, the median, 
the third quartile, and the maximum. Okay, so we can get each of those. In fact, I already got the median. The minimum is 0, and the maximum is 30. And so now, we're just going to take each of those pieces. All right, so I got the first set of data right here. I'm not going to include the median, which was here in the middle. I'm just going to include the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 numbers there. So I'm going to go from this side. I got 2, 3, 4, 5, and the median will be right in between those two. So that will be 4. And then I'll do the same thing with this side. So I'll go 30 and 5, 20 and 5, 15 and 6, 12 and 6, 10 and 7, and right between the 10 and the 8 is 9. All right, so we've got our five-number summary. That was easy. So now let's go on to letter D. Letter D, letter D. What is the range? Letter D, that reminds me of big D, little D. What begins with D? David Donald Do dreamed a dozen donuts and a duck dog too. Can you name the book? It's a classic. All right, anyway, what is the range? So range, of course, is the max minus the min. And so then we got 30 minus 0, so the range is 30. Now we need the IQR, which is the inner quartile range. The inner quartile range is the range between the inside quartiles. Here's our outside quartiles. So there's our inside quartiles. So the range is between 9 and 4. So the IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Q3 will always be bigger because it's the number that 75% of the data is below that and only 25% is below the Q1. And so we go Q3 minus Q1, which is 9 minus 4. Therefore, the IQR is 5. Ooh, very interesting. So now, my friends, we will now go on to letter E. Letter E asks, are there any outliers? Show your work. Okay, well, we know the outliers need to be more than 1.5 times the interquartile range. So the interquartile range we just determined was 5. So, uh, sorry, that means to be from Q1 or Q3. Now, when we talk about Q1, we're talking about below Q1. And when we're talking about Q3, we're talking about above Q3. And so, because that's the highest one, and we want above that, that's the lowest one, we want below that. So, we'll go ahead and we'll go 1.5 times 5, which ends up giving us 7.5. So, we need to find out a distance of 7.5 from Q1 and Q3. So Q3 is 9. So I go 9 plus 7.5, which is 16.5. So anything bigger than 16.5 is considered an outlier. And so we go and we look at our data. And we find two of them. 20 and 30 are both outliers. Isn't that exciting, folks? Now we look at the other one. So Q1 was 4, and so we go 4 minus 7.5, because we want 7.5 below quartile 1. And that gives us negative 3.5, which means there will be no outliers on the bottom, because there's nothing below 0. And so there's nothing below negative 3.5, and so therefore there are none on this end. So our two outliers are 20 and 30. Now that we know that, and we've shown our work, we can make the box and whisker plot. Now the box and whisker plot is pretty neat because all we do is we create a number line. And I go from 0 up to the maximum, which is 30. So maybe I'm going to go by 5s. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. I'm going to put down my maximum, my minimum, my inner quartiles and my median. Essentially, I'm going to put down my five number summary. So I've got a zero. I've got quartile one, which is at four. I've got the median, which is at five. I've got quartile three, which is at nine. 
Now, the maximum is also going to be a point, but that's actually an outlier, so my whisker isn't going to go out that far. I'm going to have to put another point. Now, well, let's go ahead and draw the box first. So this is box and whisker. The box contains the middle 50% of our data. So this box right here holds half of those data points. And in fact, if you go between here, that's 25% of the data, that's 25% of the data. So it seems like a lot of people, just by looking at my box here, a lot of people do four and five, which, oh, look at this, there are a lot of fours and fives. I can tell that just by looking at the box. I don't have to look at all the stinking numbers that I hate. I'm just kidding, I like numbers. Anyway, from there we create the whiskers. The whisker goes out to the minimum. And then it goes out to the biggest number that is within our range, not considering the outliers. And so 30 was an outlier, 20 was an outlier. So the biggest number that's inside of that is 15. And so our whisker will actually only go up to 15 because that is the first value that is inside of our range, which is 1.5 times the interquartile. And so from there, the other two points, we still need to show them, but they will be shown as outliers, just extra points. These are the weirdos that go out to eat so often that are probably going to be obese and eat enough that they could feed a whole farm of pigs. So therefore, we are done. We've created a column or dot plot. In fact, we did both. We found the measures of central tendency. We wrote down the five number summary. We found the range and the inner quartile range. We found out what the values needed to be for the outliers. We found out which values were outliers. And then we created a box and whisker plot using our five number summary and our understanding of our outliers. Keep in mind that the outliers will be individual points. The whisker will only go out to the last point that is within this 1.5 of the interquartile range. So the first point inside of the 16.5, which was for us 15. All right, that goes through a question. It goes through everything you could possibly need to do on this question. And therefore, we are done. See you next time.